contacts from the... From the so, for those of you who were here at our last session, you would recall that uh, Emma Harris, uh, who has been seconded over to Create New South Wales to um, to manage part of the, the legislative review for the State of Act 1998, came and, and spoke around um, some of the work that they were doing and the consultation process and who they were speaking with, and it was all very early days um, at that point. Um, so there's just a quick update here from Emma. Um, so, so they've gone through, they've made some progress, they've really been focusing on specific stakeholders in terms of their consultation, in terms of people that have high touch points with the legislation and policy. Um, and the idea is that at the moment, um, sometime between May and June, there should be an issues paper from all of that consultation collected, which will go out for public consultation and extended consultation with, with all the other public officers. Um, so that's the plan at the moment. Um, the review team would like to thank all the people who have provided issues and feedback and consultation. Um, so if that's any of you in the room or your organisations, thank you so much. Um, but there will be further communication um, coming out of that process. Um, yeah, and I think the, it is that there's been quite a number of issues. Right? So it's a quite a comprehensive piece of work. Um, so we've had updates for the, the standard on physical storage of records as well from, from our team. So that was published in February. Um, so thanks to everyone who provided feedback on the draft version of that. Um, we're really happy with how engaged many of the departments were and, and how seriously everyone took it. Um, so that's good. We've got a better piece of um, a better piece of guidance or a better standard there, um, which we think is is at least more user friendly in terms of interpreting those standards. That's good. Um, yeah, and we've we've also published revised guidance on the implementation for that standard. Um, so there's just a tool to help you, you know, actually operationalise um, what's in there. Um, we're currently working on revising the counter disaster guidance as well, which is a fallout from the update on the standard of physical storage. Um, so that's really important, you know. And I think, you know, if, if anyone's been following the news and then looking at some of the reports that are coming out, um, you know, the increase in extreme weather incidents um, globally, but as well as in Australia and the predictions from CSIRO that says they're only going to get worse. Um, you know, a number of days. You know, for states all across Australia exceeding 35 degrees, um, you know, be set to double, you know, within the next 30 years or something, right? So, um, so it's really important that you know, counter disaster stuff is taken seriously and, um, yeah, you know, not not forgotten about because we, we still do have quite a large you know, physical presence, um, you know, for those paper records, which are at particular risk from fires and floods. Um, as a quick update around the future proof strategy, so in 2007. Um, government record keeping or um, state archives and records um, commenced a future proof strategy, which was really about um, you know changing you know changing some of the direction of our initiatives um, to focus more on our digital record keeping. You know, noting, noting that it's a larger piece of what we do. Um, you know, its goals. Um, you know, one of its goals was to implement it was the, the digital state and archives um, function, which was successfully funded out of that. Um, a lot of a lot of the work that went into that strategy um, has now, you know, really become embedded in the other streams of work that we're doing, and, and the, you know, the pieces of guidance that we put out, the topics that we have people presenting on here today. Um, you know, all of those initiatives have been, you know, have been influenced by the work that came out of that strategy. So, so we did a bit of a review, decided it's achieved what we set out to achieve. We closed that down. There are some initiatives like the Future Proof blog, which. Um, you know, had, had quite a global audience, not just the people within New South Wales, which was good to see, but that has now effectively been archived on the page that it's currently on, so it's it's there. Uh, but it won't be any new contributions, at least not under under that heading. Um, and as you'll know, the recordings of these events were published on that blog. They'll now be published on the main, say, Archives and Records website under Resources on the GRK page, just if you're interested. Um, and as well, on the GRK page, we've had the benchmarking report, which we also presented on at the last records management forum. Um, so that's now on the website. If you have any questions, please reach out to us you know, about the content, about you know, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you, know, um, you think it has more broader implications. Um, yep, yeah, just reach out to us. Um, and then, um, so you know, 
you know, just like City of Sydney was talking about their new collection management system that they've got, um, we also have one. Um, its acronym is SAMS, um, so that's different. Um, I don't know how else it may differ. I believe the functionality is probably at a foundational level quite similar. Um, so this is quite exciting for us because just like City of Sydney, we'll be using BOS, um, which uh, Janet mentioned was developed with, you know, at the, at the front end was developed in collaboration with us, so I thought that was interesting. Um, so it's been a journey over 18 months um, to get all the design and everything done and built. Um, so it's, it really is a big step forward for us in terms of how we how we control our collection, catalog it, and actually make it accessible to the public. So there's three components there, um, you know, and one of those is, is devoted to that, that front-facing, you know, search, which will be integrated with the website. Right? So it's really pushing that, um, you know, public engagement and interaction with the collection. Um, so that's good. Um, there's a quick update regarding conservation. So there's a little bit of, a, of an internal change um, regarding conservation services. So in the past, say Archives and Records has referred people who are transferring content in that requires conservation to third-party conservation services and, and other vendors. Um, we've, we've changed that approach, so we now offer an internal conservation service um, as part of that transfer. Um, there's a few concessions around um, how much you can get for free up front before we actually um, need to charge, you know, when it becomes something that we can't just you know, internally accept in terms of resources. Um, but yeah, so that, that will be handled as part of the transfer process, but that's just a little bit of a change that the team wanted to highlight um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of that value proposition. So just in case you're thinking you need to go and get things conserved before you bring them to us, just bring them to us and we'll deal with it, obviously. Um, yeah. Um, and then, I guess, you know, sort of tying into, into what uh, Janet was saying, just around that, that public engagement and ambitions, I just want to take the opportunity to, to highlight some of the things that that Archives and Records are doing with its collection. Um, so Marriage Law and Law has, is, a, is an exhibition that's over at the Penrith Regional Gallery, um, so quite close to, to the Kingswood site. For us, obviously not close to where we currently are, um, so it's, it's an exhibition that explores the laws, beliefs and social attitudes that have shaped and reshaped marriage in Australia you know, over the last three centuries. Um, you know, it includes um, original items from the State Archives collection, but we've also curated a lot of items from, from State Library and, um, and other collections. You know, so it's, um, I've seen it, it's really good. Has anyone else been out to Penrith to see it? No? Wait, we've got some hands at the back who are all State Archives staff. <laughs> um, so, um, but no, it's, it's, it's really good, you know, and I think it's, um, you know, you'll go through it, and I think there's, there's something there for everyone in terms of, you know, in terms of being able to reflect on, on the material that's on display. Um, so go out, you know, there's, there's a little cafe out front, which is quite good, so you can get some food while you're out there. Um, and as well, just for those of you who didn't know, the 1828 Census of New South Wales was recently inscribed on the UNESCO Australian Memory of the World Register, um, which, is, which is really good. Um, it's a really good record, it's been well preserved. Um, and those and selected records from our collection are currently on a regional tour of New South Wales. So people can see them. Um, so there's more information on the website if you're interested about that. Um, I believe Martin Killian had a, a radio interview the other week, for anyone who caught that. It was, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and that sort of brings us to the, to the end of our scheduled programming. Um, but I guess what I, I wanted to do is just sort of reflect on you know, on some of the content that we had today, um, you know, and for us, it's you know, even for myself, you know, it's it's different once you get people up front and actually present and you know, and have that engagement with the content. Um, but but I thought we had some really exciting content, right? In, in terms of you know, different themes and different applicability to, to what we do, right? In such in such a broad space, right? You know, we had we had Janet you know, talking about the archives and their and their new systems and how they're building that engagement. You know, and I think for me, it's there's a whole concept there around the you know the records and things that we're collecting today and you know things that we're protecting you know through cyber security things we're automating in terms of their creation you know I guess we you know none of those records that were put on display were ever created for the intention of them being you know curated in that particular fashion and, and likewise the things that we're you know collecting and creating and curating today that will have that enduring social value we really don't know you know how they'll be used so I think that's so I think you know content like that. And like the marriage law and law exhibit, you know that's that's really quite exciting to see, 
you know, these old things being brought forward and, and the social impacts they can have and the way people reflect on them. You know, and the fact that they weren't ever really created for that purpose. You know, um, so I think that's that's exciting. Um, you know, and then we had we had May, you know, come through and and, and really that's you know highlighting what is you know just just primarily using a single a single system that, that many of us have in the room, although there might be slight differences in implementation. You know, some some really achievable some really achievable automation and you know re almost record keeping by stealth there. You know, and, and I thought it tied in really well with. Tim's, Tim's approach to user centered design, where you know, you've got the team with maybe the lead there going out and saying, you know, what do you want? What do you need? How, how does this process actually work? How should it work? And acknowledging how much involvement you really want in the record keeping of that process, which is zero. So we'll design it so that you don't really have to worry about any of that. It'll all be automated in the back end. So I thought that was, you know, that tied into, into Tim's. To Tim's topic, which was exciting, in that it was a very near future view, you know, of, of where technology may be able to take us in terms of taking that next step. So you don't even have to worry about the rules, you don't have to worry about the legislation change or any of that, because if you tie into the system where they've coded it, all of that automation is, is looked after. Um, which then, of course, leads into Rod's risk around the whole thing in terms of, well, if you're centralizing that and automating it, doesn't actually present. Um, a larger cyber security risk in terms of you know making up assets a little bit vulnerable. Um, yeah, so so that was just my thoughts on the day, which you I mean I have a captive audience and you have to listen. Yeah, so does anyone have everyone for attending?